Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Summit 2016. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley for AWS Amazon Web Services Summit in Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE. Silicon Angle's flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Lisa Martin. Our next guest is Lowell Anderson, Senior Manager, Product Marketing of AWS, Amazon Web Services. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, it's great to be here. First time CUBE alumni, welcome to the CUBE alumni yeah. list. Love to get you on because you know, you're in the product team and you're in uh, go to market as well as you got to look into the product suites. And right. one of the things that's been super impressive of AWS over the years, since I've been following you guys for a decade since you started in the CUBE of the past four years, is the tsunami of product <laughs> releases. The cadence of Jassy's law, I call it, yeah. and Amazon's law, which is just constant slew of releases more and more every time, not just reInvent, yeah. now you get the summits which are exploding. Right. I mean, they were tiny, right, just a right. few years ago. Right. You got New York in here. What's, what's coming out now? What's the secret sauce? How do you guys do it? And give us some insight into what's, what's happening here. Well, uh, you know, for us, innovation's in our blood. It's a part of our DNA, it's, it's what we do. Um, we're really, every year we do more. This year we're already up to over 460 new services and features and we'll hit over a thousand this year of new services and features launch compared to last year when we hit like 720, I think something about in that range. So um, the innovation train, train keeps going and you know, the way we do it is we, number one, we really focus on our customers. One of the benefits of the cloud is that we can innovate and roll out changes really rapidly for them. So just the, the whole cloud uh, environment allows us to innovate very quickly and very rapidly. So that, that's exciting and, and you see that in just the number of releases that and we can put out. One of the things that I, that I just asked the previous guest on, how do you explain the phenom that is AWS? And you know, Andy Jassy went to business school the same year as I did. And back then the competitive strategy ethos was build some proprietary technology, build a fence, protect it with guards and guys with guns and hold the, hold the line. Yeah. With open source though, the new model is, you can't do that anymore. So there's one, the open source is now a tier one citizen. Right. And two, there's no real walls to, to build around proprietary technology. So the name of the game is speed. Yeah, yeah, it's all about speed and the cloud really enables that agility. That's one of the biggest benefits that our customers talk about is how freeing up, breaking down the walls of your data center effectively so that now your compute and your analytics and your storage expand beyond the walls of that building as rapidly as possible. And, and the use of open source, as you mentioned, I mean, we're, we're big proponents of open source. We have a lot of open source services that, that we support as well. And, uh, and trying to help the developer community really bring those types of technologies to the cloud and enable that, it's a big part of our success as well. It's clear that the competitive strategy game in this new world that Andy and the team are executing is really just more features faster than the competition. There is kind of an arms race going on, but that is the open source game. So with that, what is the, are the big announcements here? Obviously this show is much more developer focused. Yeah, um, it's yeah. much more getting get, get in the weeds, breakout sessions. What are the key goods that are being well, talked about here? You know, down here in Silicon Valley, we really wanted to, to bring some more technical topics to the table and talk in that vein, talk about a couple really key areas around focused around big data and what we're doing to help enable both small and large enterprises use data across their companies in, in a more, in, to develop more competitive applications and make it cheaper make it easier to use, and make it more performant than they could possibly imagine without the cloud. So using big data is one of the key themes of the, of the conference that we had today. And then the other thing that we wanted to talk about was this movement from how we've been architecting services or, or applications in the past from being based on servers to using serverless, which is really a whole new architectural concept that's allowing our customers to build applications in ways that they could never do before and do it at a cost that they could never make feasible in the past. What are some 
great examples of customer successes that Dr. Matt Wood talked about in the keynote. Uh, one, Redfin, I think we've all in this yeah. market have experiences with buying and selling homes. Um, but I loved how we talked about friends don't let friends build data centers, that in the future, it's most organizations are going to run their own data centers, are not going to run their own data centers and move to uh, AWS benefits like becoming data driven. Big data, the more users, more data, more insight. He also talked about some of the things coming up. Um, you mentioned it too, about building with services versus building with servers. Talk to us about some of the, if you can, I spent a little bit on some of those examples. One that particularly spoke to me was what uh, Illumina is doing in yeah. terms of genome sequence. Like I got my master's in uh, biological sciences a long time ago, uh -huh. and that wasn't even a thought back then, or certainly was a massively expensive. Talk yeah. to us a little bit more about how Illumina is doing that with AWS and scaling at cost to really facilitate breakthroughs that are saving lives. Right, right. Well, you know, that was an exciting example because uh, if people that weren't able to see the keynote, Illumina is the largest genomic sequ sequencing company in the world. And they've really been able to implement a, a new architecture that's brought genomic sequencing from a, an industry that was done you know, just for very specific scientific purposes to now something that can be done all over the world to support disease research. Yes. And, and it's really the power of big data that's made that happen. And the reason they selected AWS for that is really just the breadth and depth of the big data services that we provide, along with the global uh, deployments that we support. With genomic data, they mentioned that uh, for many, 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 many countries in the world, they don't want that genomic data to move outside the boundaries of their specific geographic region. And right, so a lot of that. AWS is one of the few, very few cloud providers that has that level of geographic specificity, so you can keep the data within that specific region. Some compliance issues as well with that too. Yeah, lots of compliance issues, of course, uh, genomic sequencing, uh, lots of federal uh, and healthcare and HIPAA type requirements surrounding all of that type of information that AWS, with our focus on security, you know, is able to achieve. So, so number one, you know, it's this geographic capability which has allowed Illumina to really deploy this uh, in a global way. But second, it's really just the depth of services that we offer, whether it's the data warehousing using Redshift, whether it's the ability to, to process that data at scale on Hadoop using EMR, um, whether it's the ability to then deliver that data across the world and visualize it and upload it from all those different genomic machines that, they've, that they put into their individual customers' research facilities. Um, all of that is capability that AWS is able to to deliver to them at a cost. I think one of the things he talked about, they were looking for, I think, 100% uh, reduction, or 100 times reduction in cost over trying to do this themselves, and, and we've achieved that. Help working together with them, you know, they've been able to achieve that. Well, so I got to get your thoughts on it. the hybrid cloud, because that, you know, obviously Amazon gets, was traditionally pigeonholed as just public cloud. The lines are blurring. Clearly, the success you guys are having has been moving into the enterprise, obviously, the, CIA deal you beat IBM on, that was, uh, again, a different <laughs> instance in the GovCloud, but again, in the enterprise deals you're, you're seeing, yeah. it's up against the Oracles and the IBMs. Yeah. What it, and they're all talking hybrid. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys addressing that from a product standpoint? How do you talk to a customer that says, hey Amazon, slow down, I love you guys, <laughs> but yeah. we need a hybrid on-premise solution. Yeah, yeah, it's great, great, great question. I think, you know, first of all, I, I would say that what we've always uh, said at AWS is really in the fullness of time, we expect that you know, no enterprise is really going to want to run their own data center. And so we still see that as the end vision that, that's, that we're going to achieve in, in the long run and that most of our customers want to achieve in the long run as well. What are the critical but, conversations that they, they have? What are their requirements that you guys yeah. hear? Is it migration of data? Yeah, so, so that said, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of work to do between now and this, and this long term vision. And so, you know, a few of those things that need to be addressed, like data migration, and, and we're working really hard to help enterprises move data up into the cloud. It seems like it'd be a simple thing, right? You, you take a picture, you upload it to Dropbox. What, why is that so hard? But when you're talking about terabytes of data that have been uh, in the corporate data centers with applications for years and years and years, moving that volume of data up to the cloud is, is a significant barrier. What about barrier. moving back to the enterprise, and then, vice versa? Again, making it available for them to use and to, and to move back and forth is, is a critical 
component. So we've done a lot of work on a, a specific yeah. set of features and capabilities to make that happen. Um, a Amazon Direct Connect or AWS Direct Connect is one of those services that allows our enterprise customers to establish a high bandwidth connection to uh, AWS regions so that they can move data back and forth Is that very interconnect rapidly. or to direct connect not going through the internet? Yeah, direct connect allows them to leverage a uh, private backhaul to establish a really high bandwidth connection. And so we- Security wise alone, that's a big deal. Absolutely it is. And then uh, earlier or last year we announced um, Amazon S3 Transfer Acceleration, which is a service that allows them to utilize our backhaul to actually accelerate the upload of data into S3. Before, you have to use the internet to, to upload data to S3, and now what we've done is really extended that down to customers where if we can accelerate the transfer of their data to S3, we'll do that using our backhaul network for them. So the next um, question on top of that compounds the problem with data, which you guys are solving, and because this is, I agree, it's a big challenge for enterprise customers. IoT just complicates the hell out of it. Yeah, so yeah. that's all about moving data around, putting compute it, it to sure where the is, edge yeah. is. Yeah. This whole edge of the network de de definition really plays into some of the trends around serverless concepts yeah. that you were mentioning earlier. Yeah. How does that relate to the data equation? Yeah, so, so a couple of things. Let's touch on IoT first. So IoT brings a whole new level of complexity in terms of the number of devices and the distribution of data that you need to bring up into the cloud. And so we released this service we call AWS IoT last year at reInvent. And what that does is it makes it really easy for customers to uh, acquire data from billions of devices that might be generating trillions of messages at a time. And when you think about IoT devices, it becomes almost more complex because these devices may or may not be online all the time. Uh, they may not have a high bandwidth connection. They may not have the processing capability on the device itself to be able to update and optimize and do a lot of complex computing. So you need a, a specialized service that can work with those devices when there's intermittent connections, pull very small messages from those devices, and ingest them on a huge, huge scale. And so AWS IoT is a service that does that allows our customers to ingest those billions of messages and then connect them to AWS endpoints, big data services like Redshift and S3 and Kinesis and Lambda to process that data and generate applications that could never really be conceived before. And today I thought, um, I thought that the, uh, the whole discussion from iRobot was super interesting about how they're using AWS IoT to uh, connect uh, they're what they call their home robots, it's, it's you know, their Roomba vacuum devices uh, to the cloud and, and really enable a whole new set of applications and vision for the connected home. Really interesting stuff enabled by the cloud. Well, before Lisa answers the question, I just want to quote Ben um, Keough, who was uh, with iRobot, he's uh, an analyst over there, a scientist. Transition, I want to get your reaction to it. Maybe Lisa, you can chime in. He just tweeted, transition to the cloud Colon, treat servers like cattle, not pets. <laughs> Transition to serverless cloud architecture. Yeah. Treat servers like roaches. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty bold statement. That is a bold statement. Yeah, yeah, so, it is, but. No, no, not a pet. Yeah. Don't cuddle. <laughs> like a roach, you, you, okay. You, not, not cattle, it's roaches. People yeah. put the roaches out. So, thoughts, I mean, well, serverless, sure, comparing sure. servers well, to roaches. Well, let's talk about the evolution. I mean, that's a. Yeah, let, let's talk about the evolution a little bit. I mean, if you went back, you know, a few years back to when I was writing software as a, as a, as a graduate from, from college, when you wanted to start off a project, first thing you had to do was go buy a server, have it delivered, find a place to put it, plug it in. Call the uh, network guys, get a board, call yeah, the router, then, then get security. Had, then, then once you had it all plugged in, you had to put the operating system on it, and then you could put your development system on it, and then you could finally get started. It'd be months later before you could actually get the project started. And it seems strange to even talk about it now, but back then, this was a key thing that, that limited our ability to start projects. Well, forget the cost, Yeah, just and, the time. And, and then when you, when you finally got it done and you released the application and you wanted to scale it, you had to buy more servers and put them in the racks and, and figure out where to put them. And so this just slowed everything down. And so when we moved to the cloud and we got the ability to lease uh, or really rent servers in the cloud, it took away a lot of the hardware aspects of that, but still when you had to scale, 
you still needed to uh, provision more servers, and you still needed to maintain and patch those operating systems in that software stack. And so now what's happening with serverless and with services like Lambda is all that goes away. Now it doesn't mean there aren't servers under the hood. Of course, Lambda has lots of servers under the hood that are cranking away and implementing your code at lightning speed. But the difference is, is you don't have to manage them anymore. You don't have to think about them. You don't have to worry about them. And so with Lambda, all you do is, is load your code up into the cloud. It's executed instantaneously when you need it to be executed. It scales on demand. So as your applications scale, we can scale the number of Lambda functions in parallel to execute your code, dependent on the load that you're putting on it. And you only pay when that code is actually running. So you're no longer paying every month for those servers that are sitting in that room, uh, whether you're using them or not. So we've talked a lot about the services, a tremendous amount of services that, that AWS is offering compared with the three that you started with 10 years ago. We've talked about hybrid cloud, the opportunities there, enterprise. In fact, your CTO just last week in London was talking about the challenges with enterprise and really kind of the shift that they want to help customers grow through. A lot of capabilities, a lot of speeds and feeds. What's the, the message, rather, who's the target audience as we wrap up here? Who are you selling these services to within organizations as we see the empowerment moving from IT to the C-suite to lines of business? Who are you going after to share with them and get them to come on board as customers, whether it's enterprise? Yeah, hybrid, yeah, I, I think that's public. a really good question. And, and it, it speaks a little bit to our evolution of a, as a company as well, where you know, when AWS started, uh, over 10 years ago, it really focused on our developer messaging. But what we've seen is the just the impact of the cloud is so uh, significant that across the entire suite of different, whether that's executives, whether that's IT managers, whether that's developers, uh, there's a significant value proposition that that really at every level across the organization, high level of interest, and so. Um, we're starting to see, I think you saw today, just across all sizes of companies, across all industries, and, and even within government and, and education and public sector, the, a strong interest in motion. There's really no industry or government type of agency that's not, you know, right now looking at, not just are they going to move to the cloud, but how quickly can we get to the cloud? And well, so that's, that's really expanded the scope. And a great synopsis of, what we're of doing. actually what Dr. Matt Wood talked about with how uh, infiltrated Amazon is into uh, all the industries, big in public sector, big in startups born in the cloud, now getting to be big in enterprise. Yeah. So, Lowell, we've got one minute left. I want to get your thoughts on, um, as an insider at Amazon, obviously you're out in the field here you talk to customers in the product market, you have to look at that 20 mile stare in the marketplace, but also talk to the folks internally, engineering, product management. Sure. Talk about the coolest things that are going on right now in AWS that people should know about. Is it the machine learning? Is it yeah. Lambda? Is it Red? Yeah. Uh, Red's, what's the fastest growing? What's the coolest tech? Yeah, yeah. What, is, what are the jewels on the table right now that we should look at and, and then explore and yeah. discover more about? Yeah, well, you touched on so many cool things. I mean, the fastest growing service now today is Aurora. Uh, Aurora is our own uh, MySQL database engine that runs on RDS. And uh, the response to that's been tremendous. It, it really offers enterprise class database capability at a tenth the cost of on-premises solutions. So that's been, that's really our fastest growing service now. It's really exciting. Um, in terms of the other stuff that we're just seeing tremendous excitement about, you mentioned machine learning, predictive analytics. A lot of the work that we've been doing at Amazon, is, it's been part of our history at Amazon for a long time. Alexa is the uh, coolest thing. Alexa, Everyone wants that. <laughs> right, right, right. So <laughs> machine learning, of course, is, is something that uh, you know, we're going to continue to see uh, significant Flying cars coming soon? I, I don't know about <laughs> flying cars. cars. It's certainly not uh, on our roadmap that I'm aware of, but um, you know, who knows what Steve, uh, uh, or what Jeff is working on right now, so. Um, but we don't have flying cars on our road. Super exciting, I'm, yeah, I'm sure this is, but it's again, it's a software driven world. Mark Andreessen's new thesis is not software eating the world, but software powering the world. And I think that's a whole nother concept. It's, it's, you know, it's a global economy, so a lot of great stuff. Always a great surprise to see the coolness yeah. of AWS, the new stuff. Thanks so much for sharing Thank you. on theCUBE. This is theCUBE bringing you all the goodness of AWS here at AWS Summit in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, Lisa Martin, you're watching theCUBE. 